Shot in 4K ultra high definition. Your number one source for local news. WRAL News. Coverage you can count on. Law enforcement in Cumberland County are investigating a crash along US 301 near Tom Starling Road behind me. Coming up, I'll tell you everything we know so far. And look at this dew point. We're way down in refreshing mode. I'll show you how long we're going to hold this weather pattern. And the first court appearances happening this morning for six people who were arrested during protests on UNC's campus. We'll keep following developments in that ongoing story. A lot to tell you about here on this Thursday. And as Liz has said, it feels refreshing out there. I'm Renee Chu. And I'm Chris Loving. Good in for Jeff Hogan. Yeah, I walked out and I was like, what is this, lower 60s right now? Not too bad about that waking up this uh, morning. We've nice. got Elizabeth to get you started on the rest of your day, though. Yeah, looking gorgeous today. Yesterday was a nice day. It was a little on the warm side. We're going to drop our temperatures a bit more and the humidity, too. This is a live look at downtown Raleigh from our Jimmy V camera, taking a look down Fayetteville Street at City Plaza. It is 64, but the dew point's at 48, and so that makes it feel uh, a little bit different than it did yesterday. Temperatures are about where they are, maybe a couple degrees warmer than yesterday, but the dew point is lower, so it feels fantastic. Fantastic out there. 69 Fayetteville, 65 Rocky Mount, 59 and Roxborough, 63 in Southern Pines. The temperatures will probably drop just a little bit more on down into the upper 50s to low 60s this morning and we'll top out at 81. I mean, it is going to be a Goldilocks kind of day. I'll show you how long this pattern will hang around coming up. Breaking news, a large police response right now in Cumberland County after a crash. This is happening on US 301 near Tom Starling Road, just outside Fayetteville city limits. Nick Perlin is there in the WRL Breaking News Tracker. And Nick, what are you seeing from your vantage point? Well, Renee, you can see behind me right here a long line of law enforcement as they continue to investigate an apparent crash that happened early this morning. I'm going to get behind the camera just so I can show you a little bit more of what I'm seeing. I am pretty far back, but I'm going to focus and zoom in here. And as I focus the camera up, you're going to see one of the cars uh, that was involved in this crash. You can also see crews there. So I focus up one more time. Crews there uh, working, looking like uh, they're trying to get the car out of that. Uh, it looks like it's stuck somewhere on the side of the road, uh, but it looks like that car was involved in this crash, but uh, we're still trying to learn a lot more. There's still not a lot of details uh, uh, right now. I'm still trying to find out if anybody was hurt and what led to this crash. I'll keep, uh, keep you updated once we know more. Live in Cumberland County, Nick Perlin, WRL News. Following this breaking story, a man was shot and killed in Carboro. This happened at the Estes Park Apartments just before midnight. And WRL's Kelsey Coffey is there. Kelsey, police have been on scene for at least five hours on this. Chris, most of the police have cleared out now, but there's still one Carboro uh, police vehicle that's just outside of the complex. And the shooting happened in this apartment complex, Estes Park uh, Apartments. So police received a call about this around 1145 last night when they arrived here. They found a man dead um, at the scene. So right now, police believe this is an isolated incident. We'll be sure to keep you updated as we find out more information. We're working to find out the name of the man who was killed, as well as if the police have uh, any information information on a suspect. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News, Ivan Carborough. Today we expect six people arrested during the pro-Palestinian protests at UNC to be in court. The six people were arrested during classes with police on April 30th. Three of them were UNC students at the time. Some students were banned from campus after the protests, and the people facing charges are due to face a judge today at the Orange County Courthouse in Hillsborough. Organizers from UNC's Students for Justice in Palestine say they plan to rally to call for the charges to be dropped. Durham police say someone shot a man during an armed robbery at a gas station. This happened at the BP on Durham Chapel Hill Boulevard just after 930 last night. Police say the man who was shot was taken to the hospital but is expected to recover. Authorities have not announced any arrests in this case. Town leaders in Hope Mills will hold a special meeting tonight to discuss the loss of school resource officers and school crossing guards at several public schools next fall. The Cumberland County Sheriff's Office previously staffed those positions. Staffing shortages within the Sheriff's Office means deputies can no longer cover all schools in the county. It leaves 18 SRO positions and 31 crossing guard positions vacant. Tonight's meeting begins at 6 at Hope Mills Town Hall. We will have a link to Cumberland County Schools presentation about these changes on WRL.com. 
The jury in former President Donald Trump's hush money trial is set to return to deliberations at 9.30 this morning. They met for more than four hours yesterday in the first day of deliberations. The jurors asked for parts of the judge's instructions to be reread, and they also called to hear testimony from witnesses Michael Cohen and David Pecker read back to them. The judge told the jury their decision must be unanimous, but they do not have to agree about which unlawful means they believe Trump used. Trump called the proceedings unfair. Durham City Council will continue to review the proposed budget for the upcoming fiscal year at a special work session today. This is the second day of in-person meetings to go over the budget, which includes increased compensation for city employees and capital improvement projects. Today's work session will begin at 9 a.m. It will be live streamed on the city's YouTube channel. A public hearing is scheduled for next Monday at 7 p.m. An Ohio man pleaded guilty to threatening to kill a North Carolina lawmaker. That's what that man is saying is on supervised probation. A judge sentenced Nicholas Daniels to two years of probation, and he also got a suspended sentence of six to 17 months. Authorities say Daniels used Facebook Messenger to threaten State Senator Todd Johnson specifically to kill him and his family. Two employees and several customers are facing charges of selling and possessing drugs at three downtown Raleigh bars. Alcohol law enforcement says they received complaints back in January. Two Big Easy employees, Kayla Boyd and Matthew Brown, are accused of planning to sell drugs and allowing criminal activity at a licensed ABC premise. A customer is also accused of selling drugs. The owner there says he's planning to add off-duty officers to prevent something like this in the future. The UNC Health Championship returns to Raleigh today. The professional golf tournament helps build buzz around golf in North Carolina, specifically just before the start of the U.S. Open in Pinehurst next month. Legendary basketball coach Roy Williams will serve as honorary chairman of this year's UNC Health Championship. Proceeds from this year's tournament will support NC Children's Hospital, and this event runs through Sunday. Speaking of golf, the 79th U.S. Women's Open kicks off today at Lancaster Country Club in Pennsylvania. Pros like Nellie Corda, Hannah Green, Allison Corpus will hit the green this week. This year's purse is the largest payout in all of women's golf to date, $12 million. Make sure to tune in to WREL this weekend for full coverage of the tournament. That starts at 3 p.m. on Saturday, 4 p.m. on Sunday. American Airlines is being sued by three black men who claim they faced racial discrimination on a flight. It was horrible, honestly. It was everyone staring at me. This is discrimination. Hear more from them on why they say an airline rep removed them from the plane. New developments in a case that captivated the nation. We'll tell you about the single piece of evidence in the Scott Peterson murder case that a judge is allowing to be retested. And we're giving you a live look at Sanford this morning. Starting off pretty cool, not too bad, actually, really comfortable. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner will join us after the break for your full weather forecast. From the WRAL Severe Weather Center, North Carolina's most experienced team of meteorologists. It is 441 and we take a live look out across the area. Temperature 64 in Durham and Raleigh. Skies are clear. It's 69 in Fayetteville. So this is a little bit warmer than it was this time yesterday. But our humidity has dropped a bit more, so it feels very comfortable heading out the door. You might even want a light jacket, especially if you have kids who have to stand around at the bus stop for a while. They may be more comfortable just in uh, just in something light. But it is, uh, it's very very pleasantly cool out there this morning. And as we take a look at the afternoon, kids headed off to the bus stop. Temperatures will be in the upper 50s to low 60s this morning. Beautiful lunchtime at 77, and our highs will only be in the low 80s for this afternoon. So feeling great. We'll see more of that up until the weekend, and then we begin to see a warmer pattern. I'll show you when we're back to almost 90 coming up. Intense video shows the moments a sheriff's deputy in California was T-boned, causing it to roll over several times. This happened in Santa Clarita yesterday. Dash cam video shows the patrol car driving through the intersection when another car crashed into it. The force sent the patrol car right there. You see that rolling over right there multiple times and then finally landing upright. The deputy and two other people were injured, but it's unclear what charges could be filed in this case. <laughs> Three men who claim an American Airlines crew racially discriminated against them are suing the airline. The men say they were kicked off a flight from Phoenix to JFK. They say the crew told them it was because of body odor. The men who are black 
say they were traveling separately and don't know each other. They claim five other black men were also removed from the flight. It was horrifying. It was like, I felt like I was in prison. I was walking down and people were staring at me and I was gonna get at the guillotine and my head was gonna be chopped off at the end of it. The men were all eventually allowed to get back on the plane, which was delayed by an hour. American Airlines responded to the suit in a statement saying, we take all claims of discrimination very seriously. Our teams are currently investigating the matter as the claims do not reflect our core values or our purpose of caring for people. Convicted killer Scott Peterson's push for another trial is facing a setback. It's been 20 years since he was convicted of killing his pregnant wife, Lacey, and their unborn child, Connor. Peterson made a court appearance yesterday from prison. A judge denied most of Peterson's attorney's request for new DNA testing on evidence they say was suppressed. The judge allowed only one piece of evidence, a piece of duct tape, to go to a new round of testing. After several setbacks, Boeing's first astronaut flight is scheduled to happen on Saturday. The first launch attempt earlier this month was scrapped because of a helium leak. After reviewing the spacecraft, officials say the Starliner capsule can fly two pilots to the International Space Station safely. Saturday's flight will be the third test flight for Starliner. This morning on today, Al Roker's incredible day at NASA's Johnson Space Center. He experiences a day in the life of the Artemis II crew as they prepare for their historic mission to orbit around the moon. One of those astronauts is North Carolina's own Christina Cook. I have interviewed her. She is awesome to talk to. Check out Al's Out of This World adventure this morning at 7 o'clock on today, right here on WRAL. Veterans no longer have to pay co-pays for some outpatient mental health care and substance abuse disorder appointments. The first three visits each calendar year will be covered. The benefit lasts through 2027, and the hope is to improve access to mental health services and decrease out-of-pocket costs. A rare Tyrannosaur skull is now on display in Colorado. It's on display at the Rocky Mountain Dinosaur Resource Center in Woodland Park. That's about 30 minutes from Colorado Springs. It was discovered in Montana in 2001. It was digitally reconstructed using 3D scanning technology. Researchers determined its species lived 77 million years ago in the Utah, Montana region and predates the Tyrannosaurus rex. This thing, 10 million years older than T-Rex, this is one of one. This is the only one that's been found from Montana, and it may end up representing a new species. More research has to be done on it, but it's highly likely that it's something brand new to science. So there's Tyrannosaur and T-Rex. It's been dubbed Sir William after the man who found it, William Stein. I don't lie, I didn't know the difference between them, but now I know. Scientists at the University of California in San Francisco created a bilingual artificial intelligence brain implant. This is something to help a man who became paralyzed nearly two decades ago. The implant helps the patient switch between communicating from English to Spanish. The patient received it back in 2019, but it wasn't under three years later until three years later that scientists helped train it to become bilingual using AI. Before this, he could only communicate in English. North Carolina Senator Ted Budd visited the Blue Ridge Parkway as he continues to push to make it a national historic landmark. He visited a couple of the popular overlooks, including Three Knobs and Black Mountain. Earlier this year, Senator Budd sent a letter to the National Park Service encouraging the Department of Interior to make the Blue Ridge Parkway a national historic landmark. The designation would open up opportunities to get federal funding to maintain the parkway. Parkway is also one of the most visited spots in North Carolina and among our parks. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner in the WRL Severe Weather Center. Be nice to go for a drive and roll the windows down. <laughs> oh, it'd be so gorgeous. As a matter of fact, you could, you know, even sleep with the windows open maybe the next couple of nights. It feels so nice out there. Uh, we have a quiet start here at Fitton and Cary. It's going to be a great day to spend some time outside. They've got some lovely uh, outdoor dining here. You may look for that uh, somewhere today or, you know, whatever you can do to get outside and enjoy the beautiful weather. 64 right now, but we'll likely drop on down closer to 60 as we get uh, through, say, 6, 7, 8 a.m., and then we'll be in the mid-70s by lunchtime, but feeling just delightful out there for us today. We have the top of the tower lit in blue for clear skies that we're seeing across the area, and I love this weather watcher from Rick Armstrong uh, for Raleigh. You can see the hummingbird there at the hummingbird feeder. Just beautiful. We would love to see your weather watcher photos, too. Just go to WRL.com, search weather watchers, and it'll show you how to upload it. We'll put some of those pictures on 
on TV for you. 81 in Raleigh, 79 in Durham, and 83 in Fayetteville. Just an absolutely gorgeous day today. Our wind is coming out of the north, northwest, and that is what's keeping things nice and cool for us. Tomorrow morning, it is likely to be nice and refreshing again. 54 in Lewisburg, 54 South Hill. We may drop all the way down to 49 tomorrow morning in Roxborough, 57 in Goldsboro. We head down to the south, 56 in Southern Pines, 54 in Sanford, 58 in Irwin. So really feeling cool. And take a look at the uh, color contours, too. You can see the blue shaded areas, a good chunk of the eastern part of the country uh, showing up in blue. That's where temperatures are below normal. Yellows and oranges are above normal. And we start to see closer to normal temperatures early next week by, say, Monday and Tuesday. Right now, our dew point is way down at 48, and that puts us in the refreshing zone. It will start to creep up again. You know, we, we don't sit in the refreshing zone this time of year for very long. So tomorrow, it'll likely be in the refreshing zone as well. And then Saturday, we're comfy. Sunday, we get back to a little bit of humidity, and then we're steamy again on Monday and Tuesday. You know, and we kind of sit at steamy to tropical for most of the summer when we have a real summer-like pattern. So, you know, more of that is coming. And uh, just enjoy these gorgeous temperatures. 79 tomorrow, uh, 83 Saturday, 85 Sunday. But we're closer to 90 by the time we get to next Wednesday. Notice our chances for rain are fairly slim. Just a few tiny chances into early next week. We'll talk a little bit more about our pattern and why we're seeing such cool temperatures coming up. All right, thanks, Elizabeth. Gymnast Gabby Douglas has withdrawn from this weekend's U.S. Championships. Hear why she is ending her bid for the Paris Olympic team. And for the first time in 16 years, Brad Pitt and George Clooney are reuniting on the big screen. A look at the trailer for their new movie. Brush fires are sending massive plumes of thick smoke over parts of Florida. This video is from south of Orlando. Fire officials say low humidity, high winds, and dry conditions are creating fire threats. They say at least 19 fires started yesterday. Bug bites can leave much more than an itchy bump. They can also spread diseases. Five on your side's Keely Arthur shares Consumer Reports' top picks to keep the bugs at bay. The best offense is a very good defense, and every year, Consumer Reports tests lotions, sprays, wipes, and even plant-based options to find the very best bug spray for you. You must be brave to participate in this CR test using real mosquitoes to find the best insect repellents. A repellent fails if a mosquito bites twice in one five-minute session or if there's one bite in each of two consecutive five-minute sessions. We currently test repellents against only mosquitoes, but in past years we found that repellents that worked well against mosquitoes also tended to work well against ticks. The results, the most effective repellents against mosquitoes and ticks contain 25 to 30 percent DEET as their active ingredient. At the top of CR's ratings are Ben's Tick and Insect Repellent Wipes, Ben's Tick and Insect Repellent Wilderness Formula Pump, and 3M Ultrathon Insect Repellent 8 all excel in protection. If you're concerned about using DEET, consider this. Our ratings include over 50 repellents and more than 20 recommended ones, so it should be easy to find a way to beat the bugs that's right for you. CR found products with 30% of oil of lemon eucalyptus as good alternatives, like Repel Lemon Eucalyptus Insect Repellent Pump. CR's ratings also have a few high scores that contain 20% picaridin, like Sawyer Premium Insect Repellent Pump. Correctly applying the repellent is just as important as the kind you use. Follow the directions on the label and use a thin coat on all exposed skin. And remember, you can spray bug spray on your clothing, but not under it. Keely Arthur, five on your side. Dogs took over the North Carolina Capitol yesterday. The American Kennel Club set up its canines at the Capitol event. There were dogs of all kinds running around Halifax Mall. For us as people, understanding maybe what's the, what's the right dog for our lifestyle. Um, and learning how to be responsible dog owners. Um, we, we, it brings so much, these dogs bring so much joy to our lives. Uh, we are really happy. Look, it's a big responsibility, but it is so worth it. 
They ran agility demonstrations, met visitors, and even met a few lawmakers. Three-time Olympic gold medalist Gabby Douglas is ending her attempt to be part of the U.S. gymnastics team. Douglas announced that she will not compete in this weekend's national championships. She says she suffered an ankle injury while training. The 28-year-old was trying to become the oldest American woman to compete in gymnastics at the Olympics since 1952. George Clooney and Brad Pitt are joining forces in the upcoming film Wolves. We're getting our first look at the trailer right now. How long have you been partners? You got like the same clothes, kind of talk the same, so, like basically the same guy. We're not partners. So here's the summary. They both play lone wolf fixers who have been hired separately to dispose of a body. Wolf's marks the first time that real life friends Clooney and Pitt have starred together in a film since Burn After Reading in 2008. Also a good movie. The dark comedy hits theaters September 20th. Check this out. Firefighters in Rocky Mount saved a tiny kitten trapped in a storm drain over three days. Oh, look at it. Crews worked to coax the cat out using a booster line and very low water pressure. The department posted these pictures on Facebook. Good work, firefighters. Yeah, definitely glad they were able to save them. Live After Five returned to downtown Raleigh last night, and the theme was a celebration of women in music. Music lovers packed Fayetteville Street in perfect weather, greeted them there. You can see a little time lapse of people there. Live After Five is a sip and stroll friendly block party with live music, vendors, and food trucks. And there's one scheduled each month through the end of summer. <laughs> We are following breaking news in Cumberland County, where a large investigation is underway right now on US 301 after a deadly crash. The new information we've learned just within the last five minutes. And some schools are scrambling to fill safety positions. How one school district in our area is planning on recruiting school resource officers. And jury deliberations in the first criminal trial of a U.S. president will continue this morning. Former President Trump's new criticism of the trial.